Okay, okay, calm down, people, and don't feel bad. I have about 45 panic attacks per day lately, and face it, we have a lot to panic about. Solar storms, a man with dementia that have the key to the red button, <laughs> and what happens if he suddenly thinks that that red button is there to summon the ice cream truck. Okay, I'm joking, but I'm also not joking. The world has become a strange place. Now look, when I speak about Joe Biden, I prefer to keep it respectful, because one, I honestly know nothing about his politics prior to becoming president. Number two, I read about some of his supposed shady dealings, but I have not seen any legal action being taken, so there is no legitimate reason why a South African should take any interest in something which may or may not have happened. But having said that, and with all due respect for someone who was a career politician, worked all his life right up and into his 80s. It is time for Joe to retire. And it has nothing to do with politics. It is sad to see a man who always took pride in himself and his career, fumbling through a speech, getting confused, not knowing where he is, randomly walking off, and falling regularly. If it is embarrassing for us to see a man like that, how much more embarrassing is it for him? Well, at least during his lucid moments. I have real and true empathy because my mother now has full-blown dementia at 84. They test her salt levels, and at times when it's okay, she's also more lucid. But it is hard, and it is sad, and although symptoms can be sort of regulated by medicine, there is no way Mr. Joe Biden can run for president again. For Pete's sake, the man talks to dead people. For the love of God. Help him, protect him, and respect him, and do not allow him to run for president again. Please, let him go have an ice cream on the beach every day, if that is what he wants. His career is over, so let it end respectfully. Having said that, and coming back to, it's a strange, strange world. Master Jack, <laughs> something like that. How can so many people still vote for him in the preliminaries? Are they deaf, dumb, or blind, or all three? Surely there are younger, healthier candidates, and a couple of them. So there's a reason why I started this video with Uncle Joe, and that is because my next topic concerns Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. Well, he is indeed a younger man, but something appears to be very wrong there. <laughs> Did you guys hear him talk about Harry and Meghan and Archwell singing their praises from a podium, blaming the Attorney General and officials for not processing the check Harry and Meghan sent? Oh, what a fool. Poor idiot. <laughs> It was so funny because a subscriber got some information from the office of the Attorney General. It does not matter whether the filing and the check got lost somewhere. They were informed last year already that it had not been received. Also, at some point, a representative for the Archwell Foundation asked for an extension and actually got one. But it expired end of April. So Mr. Newsom is wrong. Archwell is at fault. And I get that this is basically a minor issue. But wait until the IRS gets involved. I wonder what tune old Gav will sing then. I actually find it very strange that he did this. Since when does a governor stand up on a podium in front of his electorate 
and gush and side with a private person or entity, unless, of course, it's his mother. <laughs> I find it very, very strange. Did he receive a sizable donation from somewhere or a call from a president, a prime minister or a king? <laughs> or is it blackmail? Did Governor Gavin sample some Soho merchandise sometime in his life? <laughs> I don't know, but this is suspicious to say the least. I think Mr Newsom has enough problems of his own and if I could give him good advice, maybe it would be best for him to stay out of Harry and Meghan's business because people who get involved with them tend to get markled. <laughs> so I'm keeping an eye out on Nigeria mainstream media publications, X and other platforms to gauge what the reactions of the Nigerian people are in general as a result of the so-called fake royal tour. And so far, it ranges from incredulous to funny but it's not going to stay that way. There is already a request for an investigation into how much was spent by the military on the visit. And I can guarantee you that if it was a significant amount, there will be hell to play. The other topic of discussion is the amount Megan spent on new clothing and jewellery. New clothing alone was approximately 120,000, 130,000 pounds. And you see, what the likes of Megan do not understand is that designer and expensive do not always look the best. But if you look like shit and your audience has to go home and battle to survive, then it is not a good look at all. And it creates anger and animosity. Did you guys see the state of the veterans' hospital Harry visited? You see, in the United Kingdom, £120,000 may not have gone far. But in Nigeria, that amount would have upgraded a couple of wards in that hospital. I personally, truly, truly detest those vanity projects people like Charles, Harry and Meghan get themselves involved in. I mean, really, build homes, install proper sanitation, electricity, running water, way, way, way before you build a basketball court. Obviously, in my opinion. I think if people are healthier because they have a warm bed, can wash themselves in warm water and use clean toilets, then maybe they will build their own basketball courts. Meghan and Harry went everywhere, but once again, they did not go into any of the more poverty-stricken areas. So what is the point of a foundation if it does not help where help is needed. Anyway, friends, this is but a short video. I'm busy doing a funny compilation for you. I have collected some fairly shocking material and it's just a matter of putting it together. But as always, I'll be back and until then, take care of your precious souls. Bye.